peer-to-peer -peer exchanges have always been very important for Mungano for reasons of learning, but more so for the building of leadership. And exchange visits were very important that way. But then as we went into the new millennium, then there were learning visits. People went and learned how to do enumerations and came back with a bit more confidence. Between 2000 and maybe 2002, there were a number of exchanges that helped develop the tools, the rituals, savings, enumerations, house modeling and planning. A lot of skills were built on, on exchanges. I think the most significant series of exchanges started to happen in 2003. And we were a fairly young uh, affiliate of SDI. And SDI came in and said, we're building a new federation in Uganda and we want you to go and help the Ugandans become a federation. And it was a brilliant opportunity for Kenya. We built a lot of leadership in trying to build Uganda. Between 2003 and 2005, there was always a Kenyan team within Uganda. They tried different types of organizing, different techniques, and they learned. And it was also a place for reflection. I remember going uh, with a community leader from Huruma who was very resistant to tenants participating in slum upgrading. But when we went to Uganda, he now started playing the role we were playing. He started trying to tell the Ugandan federations why they need to have tenants <laughs> participate. So I think it was a place for reflection for him. I think he reflected on the message he had to deliver. And, and I think in time, uh, he understood and there were benefits to his settlement. They, they now could go beyond mm, that conflict of structure owners and tenants. So Uganda was extremely informative and useful in our formation. It was a, a bit of a stepping, a stepping stone. And as we were doing uh, these things and carrying on with the local program, the circumstances had pushed us to reflect deeply on the tools, on savings, uh, on enumerations. We were struggling with savings. Every saving group was losing money. So we were forced to reflect, what do we do? How do we change this? So we reflected, we reflected around enumerations uh, because the needs were there. But out of those reflections, and the activities that we were doing, the Kenyans became very good teachers. And, and now the Federation, in, instead of always going to learn, now became uh, a Federation that went to teach and help other groups. So they went to, to, to Ghana, they, they went to start off the Federation in Sierra Leone, and they, they, they kept on going kept on going teaching and especially on enumerations. The methodology for enumerations had been refined. We were playing around with what to do with our savings. We had figured out how to stop losing savings. By 2006, no groups were reporting any lost money. So something had changed. We had learned something. We learned that you don't build a system based on trust. You build a system that people can trust and therefore we spent quite a bit of investment in strengthening the system. The Federation developed uh, a team and every group had a representative from that team and then there were network representatives and there were city representatives of auditors and every group was getting an audit, a social audit. Um, so we didn't leave things to chance. We said we are neighbors, we save together, but if we, if we just say it's based on the goodness of my heart. When I have a challenge and I'm a treasurer and I have a big family challenge, what do I do? I take a little bit and then I can't pay back. And then it breaks the group. So we strengthened just to ensure 
that if you took today, tomorrow you'd be discovered. So the taking could not happen. It strengthened Mungano and then Mungano went to teach, uh, went to many countries. And the interaction continued that way until 2009, 2010, when SDI started building around the ideas of having hubs. And they had an East African hub, which was Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and sort of saying, instead of always seeking support mm. from far away places, can federations in neighboring countries start to build a network, mm. a closer relationship? Can the, lead, the federation leaders in Kenya be able to support the ones in Uganda and vice versa, and Tanzania, and so on? So the hub started to be built. And when we went to the hub, a bit of our feeling bigger than others was was checked. Mm -hmm. we, we had to recognize that the other federations had grown. Uganda had grown tremendously up to the point in 2014 when Uganda was made the learning center for East Africa. Uh, Kenya had, I think there was a bit of envy, but, but there was also a recognition that things are not static. You don't become a teacher forever. That, that you need to sustain that, that momentum. Uh, and, and therefore, that there's a healthy competition that still exists uh, between Mungano and, and other neighboring federations. And federations generally, uh, uh, but this is a healthy competition that spurs on the federation. And, and gives them cause to think and reflect on their next uh, growth path.